speaker. It'll be okay. I've got a backup recording there on this phone and another microphone here. So uh, <laughs> I, I'm sorry that we'll have to somehow uh, cut in these, these slots. It'll be okay. Uh, all right. Now, I, I've been talking for a few minutes here, and I haven't really introduced myself yet. I'm Steve Persh. Uh, live here in Minneapolis, Minnesota. I've been coming to Twin Cities Drupal Camp since 2012. Uh, uh, there I presented Workbench for Wookiees. Uh, Tim was there. All right, yeah. Uh, uh, learning about the Workbench suite of modules, imagining how different characters and teams within the Star Wars universe would use that suite of modules. Uh, Han and Chewie would be much looser compared to the Empire's usage of uh, Workbench access and Workbench moderation. Uh, Plug to lightning talks at uh, TC Drupal 2016. I gave a lightning talk as Al Gore. I then did uh, a similar thing at DevOps Days 2019. Did a whole presentation as Al Gore. Last year, you saw me decouple my presentation uh, remote. Dan was skeptical that this presentation could be weirder than last year's presentation because I don't have any props. But yeah, it's written uh, in iambic pentameter. And this is an adaptation of a presentation that I first gave without the poetry uh, back at uh, Drupal Camp Belarus uh, in Minsk in the before times for, for many uh, versions of the word uh, the before times. In the pandemic, I found myself thinking, boy, if I ever gave that presentation uh, again, I would like to do it in a, in a more exciting way, and that is when I started rewriting it uh, in iambic pentameter. Now, uh, this hierarchy of needs, I should you know, briefly introduce. I'm borrowing from Abraham Maslow, who laid out the concept, oversimplified concept, that human beings, we organize our needs in a hierarchy. At the base, we have our physiological needs. Do we have enough food, water, sleep? Without that, we're gonna have a very bad time. Also, how are our safety needs being met? Do we have our health intact? Do we have financial security? And where do we fit in in society? Amongst our friends, our families, our coworkers? And then do we feel good about that? Do we have a sense of self-esteem for where we're fitting in in the world? And can we reach self-actualization as human beings? Uh, and I think even later on, can we transcend ourselves? I think that hierarchy of needs maps pretty well to the needs of professional websites. At the top, for professional websites is not self-actualization, but for professional websites, they generally exist to drive one or more types of conversions. And I'll talk more about what I need, mean by conversions. However, to reach those conversions, at the base we do need servers or some abstraction thereof with a steady diet of electricity and internet bandwidth. Without that, we don't have a website at all. And then, is our website stable? Is it going to crash every time there's a traffic spike or, or a security update? Are we in compliance with all of the rules and regulations we need to be in compliance with? That may mean something like university branding guidelines. It might mean accessibility guidelines and laws. These layers are, are basically asking, do we have a website at all? Is it broken? Is the website wrong? That is separate from, is the website any good? Is our website of quality. And it is possible to have a website that seems good, seems like a quality website that isn't fully reaching that fifth layer of delivering on its job, actually delivering conversions. The fictional story we'll get to in a minute here will show a rough alignment of people uh, in different sorts of roles on a professional web team between these layers of the hierarchy. I do want to caveat, though, that this is not a hierarchy of people. In some ways, it might be easier if it was, uh, if one person could say my way or the highway. But for many web teams, all of these people, director of alumni giving, designers, developers, systems administrators, for some teams, no one here is the boss of anyone else on the team. They're rolling up to different departments and they have to work together with out an organizational hierarchy telling them who is in charge. I think that is a net benefit to web teams, but it can present some challenges uh, as well. All right, let us now meet Alexi. Meet the new addition to Demo U. Alexi is starting his first day as the director of alumni giving. He's settling into his new office, pulls out his piping thermos, pours coffee with purpose, boots his Microsoft Surface, his personal Surface. No time to wait for the surplus laptop 
IT purchased. Ernest Alexi loads spreadsheets certain. He'll search out some surfeit spending. Surfing through Excel cells, he writes notes in cursive. He circles where the cash balance worsens. His predecessor, a careless person, couldn't raise funds, and his chances furnished. Alexi wordlessly wonders how to, one hour into a new job, work it so that he can rise with no disturbance. Maybe parties for alumni nurses? As he jots ideas on sticky notes, Demo University's president knocks on Alexi's open office door. Eager Alexi tap taps the touch screen, starting, stumbling through his explication, but he can see her attentions waning. She has no interest in the findings Alexi has spread across sheets and thoughts disjointed. She cuts him off and she says, make a big impact with the website first. You must double alumni donations measured through Demo U's website. And soon. That's your top priority. Do that first. The president smiles forcedly and leaves. Deflated, Alexi loads the website. It seems fine. Nothing noteworthy. Fine. It loads fast enough. It looks fine enough. How fast can you double from fine to good? Wait. On websites of peer institutions, giving is in every header menu. Alexi has a clear challenge for sure. But the answer seems more than simple. <laughs> Just add giving to the header menu and Alexi can tackle bigger things. Uh, now, I, I did not tell you that we would also be meeting the president of the university because isn't that how it goes on web projects that there's someone higher up in the organization that uh, you may not know about who suddenly swoops in and has an opinion on how your job uh, needs to be done. Another thing uh, I, I didn't fully tell you here is that before the beginning of today's story, the team at Get Demo University just switched to Gutenberg. Oh, that's another thing I didn't tell you. I wrote the poetry version of this presentation for the context of WordPress. Please, please forgive me <laughs> that some of the specifics here will be about WordPress. I did first write this presentation for the context of switching from Drupal 7 to Drupal 8. WordPress has gone through a very similar thing from the pre-Gutenberg, Gutenberg being their new slick. It's now just called the block editor now that it's in WordPress core, but it's a similar cultural moment for the WordPress community where a site has to make a big leap from the before to the current world of Drupal 8, 9, 10, 11, <laughs> or uh, in the WordPress case, Gutenberg. So this big relaunch project went mostly okay. It went about as good as one of those projects can go. Those projects require you to rethink every plugin for the new site. They require that you question every element on every page for the new site. You have to ensure that the new site is going to work on every device for every stakeholder. And here's where it gets tricky. You do that while you're practically ignoring every page on the old, wait, the current website. This detail here for one person in the room might be the most important bullet point in the whole presentation. As much as I enjoy the poetry here, I do want to caution against a linguistic trap. When we engage in those big redesign relaunch projects, I, I've seen this on teams I've been on, I've seen it within Pantheon uh, ourselves, we start referring to the new thing as the new thing, and the current thing, the thing that is presently serving traffic to the website visitors, as the old thing. No, it is not the old website until it is completely gone. And as long as it is serving traffic to the public, it is not the old website, it is the current website. That misunderstanding can result in a lot of difficulty, technical difficulty, and as we'll see here as we meet more people, interpersonal difficulty. Changing the header menu 
requires politics. He'll have to convince Sarah, the director of communications. Sarah's family dates back to the first brick affixed to Demo University's foundation. Her family probably fixed her admission and employment, so thinks everyone she meets. She fears wants to evict her from this job she actually earned by driving the clicks. Yes, she's surrounded by some intergenerational picks. There's her great-grandfather's 50-yard kick to win the Grand Bowl in 19-some-six. But Sarah's on her iMac, deep in the mix, looking at pages, asking what to nix, a relaunch fumbled like a bundle of sticks. Now she's thinking through SEO tricks. This job's more than Google Analytics. Emails pile up from all of her critics. They backseat drive asking dumb questions while clocks talk tick. Have you heard of TikTok? Gosh, that's where kids these days record their antics. She digs through her purse to find the chantix. She sighs and thinks she's among relics. Then Alexi knocks, looking angelic. I just had an idea. Well, kind of. Alexi decides to just spit it out. We need to add giving to the menu. The header menu that's on every page. Sarah's impressed at the gall, the gumption, to make this request his first impression. Alexi is clearly up to something, but can it be done without regression? Sarah knows that header menu space ain't cheap. If the prior alum director did his job, it'd be in that menu for keeps. Now, will it squeeze in and not break the grid? Signed in, Sarah edits the menu fast, but oh no. It does that thing where you have one line of links and add another last. Now two lines wrapped look broke in half. How can they resolve this simple, small bug? Let's see what happens and who else we'll meet when we crack the hood, look under the rug, and find just how deep this hole need be dug. Uh, the, the hole is going to be dug very deep, uh, all the way down uh, to, to servers. So ideally, the director of communications and folks like the director of alumni giving that needs some kind of outcome from the website would be talking about those conversions. They're instead talking about, oh no, we somehow broke the header menu. Now, when I say conversions, broadly speaking, there are about five types of conversions that a professional website exists to drive. In the context of uh, higher education, you're pursuing practically all five of these, uh, at least four. In the middle, we have lead generation. Now, in the higher education context, you're probably not going to call that lead generation. You're going to call that recruiting the next class of incoming freshmen, but the tactics, the technology implemented looks a whole lot like the lead generation that you'd find on, you know, Pantheon.io, where we encourage you to talk to our sales team, and uh, that is the, the motion of lead generation. That is separate from an e-commerce website where the sale happens on the website itself in the university context. Would you like to buy some football tickets? Would you like to buy uh, a t-shirt or a sweatshirt? Uh, that is one way you might go about recruiting those uh, potential incoming freshmen. You might also want to reach as many people as possible, unique users reached. You might want to show off the cutting edge research being done at your inst institution to as wide of an audience as possible. The website itself, to some degree, is an advertisement. And then daily active users, where you want to be bringing back the same group of people on a daily basis, a weekly basis in the university context that could be online learning portals. Now, a university website probably isn't going to be monetizing traffic through ad revenue the, the same way uh, a journalism site would be. You, you're not going to have like those sketchy tabula ads at the bottom of a university uh, homepage or, or article page, but a lot of university homepages still function as a series of ad slots, a, a jQuery slideshow perhaps still. They're not purchased through money, they're, they're purchased usually through university clout and, and whoever can persuade the director of communications that their thing is the most important thing to go uh, on the homepage. So ideally, uh, our director of communications would have enough time and space in her day to think about those outcomes that are needed for the website. 
However, we will see, uh, we've seen to some degree that she does not have enough time uh, or space in her day, which will make it even harder to have conversations with the next set of people uh, we will meet who are more concerned with the functionality of the website and is, our, is the website we're generating a quality website. At a coffee shop just south of Sarah, we find Eduardo, the senior designer, softly sipping espresso, taking pause. The caffeine hits and his mind slowly thaws. Feeling raw from endless tweaks and tickets that gnawed at his soul yet weren't his to fix, pre-dawn phone buzzes of screenshotted bugs talked over in meetings like he lost his lungs. In the weeks since the relaunch, he's had to relearn how and when to relax his jaw. He nearly fell into Gutenberg's maw. As the relaunch spun wildly pitch and yaw, Eduardo has a new self-imposed law. Draw first. No phone, no screens. First, he must draw. Every morning, he brawls with blocks again, but he's in charge when it's paper and pen. When he's done, he'll show WordPress who's the boss. He'll win the next round, no matter the cost. Then, in walks Sarah, relieved to find Ed. His teeth grind and his stomach turns in dread. Sarah relays the menu thingy, and it's clear she wants a quick guarantee that Ed will design a nice fix shortly. But Ed thinks, this is how you come to me? Our first convo in the relaunch debris. Urgent requests from unfit appointees. Ed is fed up with these Petty bourgeois bourgeoisie. He has no advanced degree, but he's got more guts than these PhDs with names on the marquee who love to quote Trotsky while they're brown nosing a trustee. How can I prove that they can just trust me? Is what he thinks, and again leaves unsaid. He grabs his laptop, resenting the screen. Sarah hovers, Ed glares, pull up a chair. Ed taps the tab key. You want more links there? Wait, tap, 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 tab. The focus is stuck. Here we go, this right here is just our luck. Ed says, I don't know all the legalese. Let me think before you interrupt me. We can't slide on accessibility, says Sarah, fearing lawsuit inquiries. Yeah, I know, says Ed, now the appointee of problems bigger than menu entries. So we, we should be talking about what makes for a quality website uh, between these two. That is not, unfortunately, what they are, are talking about because we keep getting pulled further and further down to deeper concerns. Uh, just on that word quality, uh, back in, uh, yeah, this was just last month, I was able to visit the Smithsonian knowing that they had this relatively new Zen and the Art of Motorcycle Maintenance uh, display, celebrating the 50th anniversary of Zen and the Odor Art of Motorcycle Maintenance, a book which is not that much about Zen nor motorcycle maintenance. It is mostly a book about uh, a man recovering from uh, a mental break that he had while pursuing a clear definition of the word quality. In the motorcycle met metaphor, he says that there is one view of quality, uh, the mechanics view of quality, is the motorcycle structurally sound? And then on the other side, there is what he calls the romantic view of quality, what it feels like to ride the motorcycle. And he posits that those need to be unified. And whether or not you, you buy into that premise that we need a unification of those two sides, it is harder if on the mechanical side, things are getting infinitely subdivided. In the web development world in the last decade, the technical side of things has gotten near infinitely subdivided. It would be as if, okay, we don't just have Honda mechanics and Harley mechanics. We also have mechanics who specialize 
only in the drivetrain. We have mechanics who specialize only in the front wheel, and they don't talk to the mechanics who work on the back wheel and the back tires. And they don't talk to the mechanics who work on the, the seat, and they don't talk to the mechanic uh, who works on the, the handlebars and the controls. That, I fear, is where we have gotten to in, in the web development world, where we have a hard time talking about the quality of the overall website when the pressures that we as professionals have been put under have forced many of us to hyper-focus on niche areas of the website. We'll see a bit more of that breakdown as we uh, meet our next person. Meet Eleanor, the front-end specialist. Well equipped with her MacBook Air lifted high above a standard standing desk, with monitors splitting JavaScript snippets, stacked, overflowing, VS Code going, NPM installed, Webpack is showing, she was right all along. Gutenberg, gone. Now it's clear to her where things went all wrong. Retreated now, she feels less defeated. She's in her happy place, with no WordPress, just the components, isolated, clean. Now she can make sense of what it all means. As her fingers dance together upon the cherry switches, she quickly catches Ed's eye as he rounds cubicle corners. He sent no slacks. Why invade her quarters? She takes off her pink AirPod Max headphones, pausing playback of dancing on my own. She quickly complains, I was in the zone. Ed relays the problems. Now they're not alone. Eleanor closes Storybook and signs into WordPress and sees a sign of hope. The plugin supplying the header has an accessibility update. Yay! Ed says, wonderful, so we're good here, right? Uh, Eleanor says, I'm sorry, maybe, nope. Uh, looks like we also have security updates to apply. We need those today. Ed doesn't understand. It's just WordPress. Update the stuff. Isn't that your job too? No, says L. I'm afraid things might regress. Nick does updates. I'll get this in his queue. Nick, the backend dev, isn't at his desk. Luckily, Eleanor knows where to check. The problems with this site keep on stacking. Links, headers, lawsuits, and now risks of hacking. Again, we are getting pulled deeper and deeper down. Uh, we've got a, a security concern here when uh, these folks should be talking about compliance. And, and compliance sounds like a, a bit of a, a boring word here, but I think compliance can be interpreted in uh, a few ways. There's complying with uh, security questions, like in your, in your work, you might experience compliance from the question of a, a chief security information officer, or chief information security officer asking you, is the website as a whole secure? Going back to that idea of quality as a, a view of the whole, it's not all that helpful for the chief information, of, uh, chief information security officer to hear from Eleanor, well, I'm the front end developer and I make sure I don't put any like cross-site vul scripting vulnerabilities in our templates, but this is WordPress and a lot of those vulnerabilities that really affect WordPress come from the file system and that's somebody else. Similarly, uh, if the senior designer is asked like, is our website is our whole web presence, all of it, in compliance with our branding standards? That's a tough question to answer <laughs> if the designer and the front-end developer working together can say, well, we made a, a base theme that's compliant, but we can't stop people from making child themes and doing whatever, so no, we don't have a definitive answer. So, so how do you work uh, against that pressure of, of subdivision that leads to us not being able to answer uh, holistic questions? One good place to start, I think, is by catching the wrong things fast. Uh, a a hyper-specific example of this is coding standards. This is a, an example from the WordPress world of coding standards. In Drupal, we've got our own. Uh, I cannot keep track of in my head that in WordPress, it is correct to put a space around or between the square brackets if the thing is a variable and uh, 
you you don't do that if it's a string and like okay machines can check that much faster than human beings so we should not spend our, our human time checking those things i used to spend my human time <laughs> checking those when i had deeply internalized the word uh, the drupal coding standards that is not a good usage of time if we know that there's a clear definition of of right and wrong for something at this level let the machines catch that for us now this is not what the chief information security officer is asking about when they ask about compliance uh, with, with standards. They may not care at all about tabs versus spaces or, or spaces in between square brackets. They're asking about that holistic uh, view of, of the world. That's where we need to make more time and space in our days to work proactively. At Pantheon, we, we supply a, a product called Custom Upstreams that uh, empowers teams working on a large fleet uh, of sites to more quickly distribute updates to, say, their shared single sign-on plugin or module, to their shared base theme, so that you can more confidently say, well, we did push out the, the single sign-on update to all sites. So at least, at least that part we know has gotten to, uh, to all of the sites. Ideally, if we can cut, nearly cut out all of the robot-capable uh, checking of wrong, and if we can minimize the proactive work that we have to do to, to keep things secure, that opens up more time and space in our day to do the, the proactive human checking of, like, can a real human being actually navigate our website with a keyboard only? That is different from did site improve or some other automated checker, you know, find some images with, with uh, missing attributes. Let's now uh, meet our, our backend developer. Alone under the old library's crest, Nicholas made a temporary nest. Obsessed, he types faster, a man possessed. Distressed, he's now got space to ingest what blocks have done to beloved WordPress. One week removed from the relaunch, egressed from his soul to the live domain addressed, Nicholas now has time to learn, digest. With a MacBook Pro just under his chest, a drive to test, though not yet test driven, riveted, reacting with no action, his regard a 202 reaction. As React wrestles requests requestioned, JSON responds with fast satisfaction. Jest tests return green. Exit code zero. This hero of WordPress rests. Yes, he rests. At this sunny summer hour, Nick feels blessed. Early morning shadows shrink in the west. The library's silence is then recessed as rubber shoes clap an important quest. Eleanor whisper shouts, plug-in updates, three unapplied security updates. Nick waits, don't take the bait. As if he did not know this was already on his plate. Did you read the details, Eleanor? Did you see the attack vectors? Do not apply to our site at all before you came and wrecked my perfect, quiet morning. Eleanor doesn't believe it. The hubris. Just apply the darn updates, Nicholas. Nick whisper shouts back with growing fervor. First, I need a working staging server. The updates apply fine on my machine, but I won't shortcut deployment hygiene. Excuses, excuses, thinks Eleanor. She says, well, I'll go tweak markup some more. This story began with a missing link. Now we find the whole web team out of sync. How is it that web professionals working together on the same website can have different pictures in their heads of what it means to keep those websites stable. I think one way we can answer that is by looking at just how complicated it has gotten to run a professional website. I don't expect anyone here to read or internalize this diagram. This is the AWS reference architecture for WordPress. This is the architecture recommended for one 
WordPress site in one environment. This is just your live site for one WordPress site. And the diagram for Drupal is equally complicated. It takes a lot of time and brain space to understand this diagram. You probably would need one or more full-time people devoted to just the concerns of this diagram if you wanted to go this route. And those people will not have a ton of extra time to think about the stuff beyond this realm. And, as I said, it has gotten so much more complicated in the last decade. This is just the WordPress part, and I don't have time to go through this diagram uh, that I showed at last year's presentation where WordPress or Drupal shrinks to just this part, and depending on who you talk to in the modern web development world, no, the, the Node.js server is the center of stability. No, the, the CI server is the center of stability. No, the CDN, that is the part that we need to keep stable. I, I don't think there is a true right or wrong here. Uh, I think it's important that we all recognize that as specialized professionals, we're looking at the question of stability from different angles, and we may have a hard time agreeing on what is the most stable way to run a website? Uh, one way or another, there will be servers involved, though. Kels didn't race in the Gutenberg dash. She was too busy, a one-woman stash of interdependent code written in bash. When anything breaks, she answers, not press, calmly asks, have you tried clearing the cache? <laughs> Teeming masses, many massive demands, yet still no team for this center of mass. Understaffed since Y2K didn't crash. Kelsey sighs and sips her tea, Earl Grey, hot, out of her own class of 99 mug. She's seen the decades since go in a flash. Flash. <laughs> <laughs> Just another trendy fad dispatched. She and Janet are Jane, empty trashes. Kelsey RMs, some once applied patches. While Jane collects commencement gown sashes, swept up and then tossed out with the ashes. The tea splashes, the moment passes. On her desk, a new ThinkPad dashingly sits atop a steely sticker, brashly reading simply, This machine kills fascists. <laughs> her worries of rainbow table hashes and more interdepartmental clashes fly from her head when Nicholas smashes doors, shouting, The staging server crashes. Kelsey doesn't look up. She says plainly, I know. Do you? No. Why? Nick asks and huffs. No, uh, I don't. I'll get to that when I'm done setting up this laptop and other stuff that I'll be bringing to Alexi, the new director of alumni giving. <laughs> Kelsey weighs how much time to spend helping new hires who might not last a semester against the pressure to unblock updates for these web devs who do know how to pester. Hmm. Hmm. Alexi can take it from here. Hey, my name's Kelsey. Here's your new laptop. Alexi looks up from crumpled post-it notes. Let me know if you need anything else, says Kels, as she's already turned to leave. Can you help me make a website? says Alexi. <laughs> Kelsey's heard this type of question before. So to avoid taking work chill at whore, her answer should be bright and sound helpful. More than it might really, um, be helpful. Yes, I can. I'll provision a VM, Kelsey says. Ubuntu or Debian? Never mind, says Alexi through tight lips. I'll go my own and I'll just use Wix. 
Uh, a few, a few knowing laughs there. Uh, I think some people have, have been in such situations themselves. So uh, all of all of our characters here are are frustrated, and uh, I, I think part of their frustration is that they they are all feeling overwhelmed. They all feel like they did not have uh, enough time and space to do the work that they thought was uh, important. They have gotten stuck in the middle here, where there are so many inbound requests, so many uh, needs to be fulfilled that even just given a, a week to recover after the big relaunch, they all have retreated to the place they feel most comfortable, be it storybook for the front-end developer, automated tests for our, our back-end developer, the director of communications just wanting to, to look through the pages and asking uh, if they, they look broken. To move forward, I think to move to that ideal future state where our web presence fully supports the mission of our institution, that's going to require saying no to some of these uh, ad hoc requests that come in from any corner of the university or any corner of, the, uh, of your organization. It's also going to require that every person on a web team proactively asks themselves, do I have enough time and space to do my job that I am responsible for. Like, Eleanor is still going to want to work on the components in Storybook before they get to WordPress. That is not necessarily uh, wrong or bad, but can it be done in a way that doesn't require 110% of your available work time? Because if it does require 110% or more of your available work time, that's going to lead to burnout and frustration, and our web teams will not be able to collaborate effectively. We should be picking tools and processes and mindsets that lead us to minimizing uh, the amount of time we spend on, uh, say, the, the toil of just applying security updates. That should be uh, as little time as possible. If we have that time and space to move beyond our individual roles, even if, if the folks on this hypothetical team could just be working in pairs, they might be more effective. Our system administrator might say, let's straighten up our deployment pipeline. Release faster and get better uptime. Our back-end developer might say, we can automate manual clicking to stop regressions while clocks are ticking. At the top of our hierarchy of needs, that director of alumni giving with a, a fresh perspective might say, short-term thinking got us in this cluster. Luck is not enough for long-term luster. Our seasoned director of communications might know, you know what questions the president asks, so work backward to make your list of tasks. And in the middle, our senior designer could say, we can clean up this UX mess. Success will follow from a simple user test. And finally, our updates to the donate form are void unless we test on an old, cheap Android. <laughs> Ideally, uh, everyone on the team knows the job of the website, knows the conversion that they are uh, pursuing. I certainly have in previous jobs operated in the mindset of, okay, yep, I'll build the form. Whether or not anyone ever fills out the form, it's not my job, not my problem. Um, that is not a healthy mindset for the team uh, overall. Ideally, we all have enough time and space in our days to look uh, up at what that top level goal is for the site and our team. Thanks so much, everyone. All right, I think we have like three minutes if there are any questions. Yes, Matthew Tip. So um, I'm working on a site right now where Drupal is both decoupled in the back end and decoupled in the front end, and it's even way more complex than mm -hmm. this scenario. Mm -hmm. And it seems like that's where a lot of people want to go, is more complexity, more decoupling. Mm -hmm. Do you think that is going to help this situation, or? Not necessarily. Um, I, I think a lot of, so that, that push towards making website architectures look more like this diagram uh, has been, the, so many different pressures have led us there. And that, that was the subject of my presentation last year. Like, how did, what were the pressures that led to each of these boxes popping up? 
I think the an overall theme is a lot of people, not wrongly, want to feel like their work is the center of things. I, I, I think if you asked you know, just, just about any of these characters to describe their job, there's a good chance they'll say, you know, we're right in the middle of things. Um, the system administrator might say, like, we're right in the middle of things. We handle you know, requests from all over, and the director of communications might also say, I'm the one who's in the middle of things. I take in all of the input, uh, and when, ev when everyone perceives themselves or their role as the center, then they want the diagram to be drawn in a way that puts their work and their responsibility at the center, which requires more pieces on all the other sides. Uh, I, I happen to think that part of the reason Drupal and WordPress have continued to succeed now in our, our third decade of Drupal and WordPress is that they accommodate a pretty darn good balance between all of these roles. Um, Drupal perhaps prioritizes the developer or the site builder role a bit too much at the cost of content editors, uh, but the, like, you know, broadly speaking, I, I think the LAMP stack balances concerns of uh, everyone pretty well. And um, yeah. I, I'm responsible for Pantheon's doc site, which is a, a statically generated site that is entirely run through Git. That flow does not <laughs> work well uh, for content editors. We do that because uh, the people working on it are very comfortable in Git, uh, and uh, it, it works for us, but it you know, would come at the cost of, of other hypothetical roles. So uh, our, my perhaps overall recommendation would like, it may be beneficial to, to carve out an hour for like explain it to me like I'm five time where you draw out that decoupled architecture where like there's a thing in front and a thing behind and to ask like, okay, why? Why, <laughs> why, do, why does each of these boxes have to be here and, and are we getting enough benefit from each box to warrant the complexity created by the addition of that box? All right, I probably spoke long enough to now be over time. Uh, yes, one minute over time. Thanks so much, uh, everyone, and happy to chat.